Okay, Eden, why don't you, <laughs> why don't you rest back? Um, I'd like to uh, do a relaxation for, for Shavasana uh, that I actually um, have adapted um, from something I learned from a colleague. Um, so you, uh, the suggestion is that you bend your knees and you put the soles of your feet on the floor. Um, and just try to set your legs up so that you feel like the legs are just resting. You're just resting through the bones. You don't have to work at all muscularly. Um, and then uh, you can place your hands on your belly. If for any reason you don't enjoy having your hands resting on the belly, the point of this is that you're bringing your attention to the breath movement in the belly. So you can just do that with your mind if your preference is to have your hands um, away from the belly. All right, so just take a moment and uh, do a little internal scan for yourself. Uh, notice whatever parts of you are on the ground and use that to focus and settle your mind. And simultaneously uh, feel the breath movement in the belly because your hands are moving. Perhaps you just feel the breath movement in the belly um, from the inside of the body. And then bring your attention uh, to your feet. And just sense that your feet are sinking into warm earth. Which is a reasonable thing to think about in the spring. Right. So my, my feet are sinking into warm earth. The depth that they can sink to is essentially limitless. And I feel the breath gently moving my belly. Draw your awareness from your feet up the length of your legs and become aware of the feeling of the two sides of the pelvis resting. Often uh, the clear part of the pelvis that's resting is the middle, the sacrum. So just feel the pelvis resting, the sacrum resting. Um, into warm earth. It can be very lovely to visualize a specific kind of earth, you know, a grassy field, sand, moss, thick moss, very springy, accepting of weight. Pelvis resting. Be present with the breath movement in your belly.
attention start to travel um, up, up the torso um, and see if you can feel some part of the spine uh, that is in the upper back connecting to the ground, your thoracic spine. The thoracic spine runs the length of the upper back. And so it's likely you can feel some of the thoracic, again, resting into warm earth. And if that feels like too precise of a focus, just, just feel your upper back resting, your belly moving. And spread your attention um, throughout the upper back. If you want to think precisely, think about and feel your shoulder blades settling. And let uh, the feeling of settling widen further out into the arms, perhaps all the way to your elbows. Okay. So shoulder blades, upper arms, elbows, falling into moss, grassy field, sand, warmth. And slide your attention back to the middle of your upper back, where your thoracic spine is. Travel up through the neck and land your awareness on the weight of your skull. This is our final destination. Skull resting, belly moving as you breathe. And then the last suggestion in this um, relaxation is to try to sense or feel all of these areas simultaneously. Your skull, your shoulder blades, moving all the way out to your elbows, your thoracic spine, your pelvis, your feet. These are all your anchor points. And the anchors just drift deeper and deeper into earth. Feet, pelvis, thoracic, shoulder blades, elbows, skull. So take a little bit of time on your own. I'll be silent. Continue to feel the undulation of the breath in the belly.
as you're ready, move in your own way. Follow the guidance of your body. So as you're moving a little bit, uh, just please continue to notice your feet. I can feel my foot or my feet in contact with the ground. Um, I am having a bit of a challenge sensing my feet. Yeah, we feel the feet, um, yeah, by moving them, um, by connecting them to the floor. Um, Some people like to touch their feet. Yeah, these are different ways. Yeah, foot on a foot, if you're in little boat. Yeah, so whatever you're doing, whatever movements um, are important for you right now, uh, just be aware of your feet. And pretty early on in your practice, um, include bridge pose. Include the bridge pose uh, where we think about creating two footprints, pressing into warm earth. Well, why don't we use the imagery from Shavasana? Press your feet into warm earth and you're leaving a perfect historic footprint, the heels, the outer edges of the feet, the balls of the feet, the inner edges of the heels are often um, important to think about in bridge pose. Whole heel, outer edge of the foot, ball of the foot. Yeah. And just uh, press your feet down, roll your way in and out of bridge pose a few times. Um, and use a little boat. Uh, any variation of little boat uh, as your counter pose. So a simple little boat with the legs essentially hip width apart, wide little boat. Yeah, maybe, maybe cross your ankles or your knees, whatever suits at the moment. The twist I'm thinking um, is very nice for um, keeping our awareness around the feet is the one uh, where the feet are quite wide on the mat. Uh, bridge pose, it's bridge pose twist or windshield wiper twist. Uh, the arms are quite wide at shoulder level and the legs simply rock from side to side. Right? And this, uh, this is a good twist to keep track of the feeling of the feet. I feel the sole of the foot. I feel the sides of the feet. As I come back through the middle, I feel the soles of my feet. Mm -hmm. right. And if you're inclined to rest in your twist once in a while, um, it's, uh, it can be very nice to feel the breath movement in the belly, in breath. And as you breathe out, just imagine and sense that your feet, the sides of your feet, are sinking into the ground a little bit more deeply. Right, so in breath, and then out breath, I sink into the sides of the feet. And of course, you'll switch sides whenever it suits you. You'll take as many breaths as you like on each side.
And at some point, you'll come back to a little boat as a counterpose. So I'm going to suggest we start to move the feet a little bit more actively. There's some really basic um, movements of the ankles and feet and toes. Um, it can be uh, useful to be able to look at the feet. Um, so if you can comfortably um, and happily lengthen your legs up in the air um, without anything underneath the pelvis, uh, that's a choice. Um, another option is to use a bolster underneath your pelvis. Um, and the, the rationale for that, of course, is that uh, it may be much more comfortable for me to lengthen my legs. Right? So just a reminder, <laughs> the bolster can go underneath the pelvis and um, perhaps underneath uh, the waist. The measure of, you know, is the bolster or the cushion from my couch or my blanket in the right place is when I put my legs in the air, do I feel pretty comfortable? Right? Does my lower back feel comfortable? Do I feel somewhat restful? Uh, no effort in holding up the legs. All right, so um, I'm going to go through a variety of movements for the feet and legs, and I'll um, encourage you to put your feet back down whenever you feel you need to. Um, join in uh, to the practice. Rest in your own timing. So the first movement... Um, of the foot is to point and flex. Right? There's many things we can think about when we're pointing and flexing. Um, for instance, as I flex, I'm stretching out my calves, my Achilles tendon, the sole of my foot. Um, as I point, I'm uh, stretching out the shin, the front of the ankle, the entire front of the foot. And so I, I know this in my mind, and can I feel this as I go back and forth between flexing, bottom of the foot, back of the lower leg, pointing, top of the foot, front of the lower leg, the shin. Yeah, it can be fun to point one foot and flex the other. Um, excellent for the toes to look for the point in the motion where you can really spread your toes, spread them apart. And it's um, a very typical thing that happens if I'm having any challenge uh, spreading the toes, I, I might just be spontaneously spreading my fingers and hands. Um, you might do that on purpose. You might look for the point where you can um, spread your toes and assist your toes uh, by spreading your hands. So pointing and flexing, toe spreading, yeah, feeling the effect. That's all we're doing. We're feeling the effect of pointing and flexing throughout the entire lower leg. Uh, when, if you put your feet on the floor, this is a great moment to just uh, feel your footprint. Sink your footprint into warm earth. Now, the um, second movement uh, to try out would be circling, right? So I'm circling my feet round and round. I'm circling my ankles round and round. And so this is just a way to find pointing and find flexion. It's an indirect route. Right? If you're circling the feet towards one another, at some point go the other way. You can even try, yeah, you can even try circling both to the left or both to the right. And trying all these different patterns is fantastic for the mind. Helps us map new patterns in the nervous system. Mm -hmm. Again, whenever you want to take a break, you could do little boat. You could put the soles of the feet on the floor. Um, another lovely option is to lengthen your legs out on the ground. Mm -hmm. Just feel your heels resting. Yeah. Small caution, if you're on a bolster of some kind and you've got your legs long, 
um, with the heels settled, just make sure your lower back is comfortable. If there's any um, compression or discomfort in your low back, uh, perhaps bend one knee and um, only lengthen one leg at a time. All right. Each time you rest, each time you connect your foot or feet to the floor uh, during your resting, uh, sense the footprint sinking into the ground. Um, and also just feel your feet, uh, we could say, from the inside. Your body has this ability to uh, sense itself from the inside out. Right? So utilize that. The um, third motion, uh, if both legs are in the air, just think about swinging the soles of your feet towards one another and away from one another. Yeah, so that's an, a big ankle motion. When I swing the soles of my feet towards one another, I'm stretching the outer ankle. When I swing the soles of the feet away from one another, I'm stretching the inner ankle. Yeah, just see how much of a kind of a a swinging U-shaped feeling you can get uh, in the ankle. Yeah. All right. So those are the those are the three essential patterns in terms of ankle and foot move movement: pointing and flexing, circling, which conveniently incorporates pointing and flexing. And then uh, the swinging of the soles of the feet in and out, which has the attribute of stretching one side of the ankle and strengthening the other. Okay. Another very nice counter movement to do is shaking, uh, shaking, shaking, shaking the legs and feet. Uh, you might try to shake the, yeah, arms as well, sure. Um, you might try to shake the legs uh, so hard that you sense your feet might go flying off <laughs> up towards the ceiling <laughs> or across the room. Yeah. yeah. And if you're feeling, you know, lethargic at any point in your day, uh, shaking is a great way to energize and to encourage uh, more fluid in the joints. When you're ready, um, if you've got a bolster underneath you, uh, just slide it away. Okay. 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 All right. Um, and let's uh, do one more bridge pose, one more two footed bridge pose, just to see how bridge pose feels now. How clear does my footprint feel to me? Does the footprint feel equal right and left? How does my feeling of the feet change as I press down, roll up? And then when I roll down towards the, relax towards the relaxation in the torso, uh, how does the footprint feel at that point? Now I'd like to introduce um, a, a version of half bridge pose. Uh, one leg is long, uh, and the other leg, we could say, is in bridge pose. The arms can be uh, comfortably about shoulder level. You might feel um, quite relaxed with your arms overhead and settled on the ground. Uh, just, just assess you know, what feels like I can really let the upper body just be supported by the ground. Now the two sides of the body are going to feel quite different in this half bridge pose. The side with the long leg, let's think of it um, as if it's in Shavasana. It's passive. It's going to remain heavy. You're going to think about the sole of the foot on the bridge pose leg and you're simply going to press that foot into the floor Make a full footprint, 
and allow yourself to be rolled languidly onto the long leg side. So you can press down, roll, and then release that pressure in the bridge post foot and fall back or roll back onto your back. So the movement in half bridge pose is catalyzed by the action of your foot pressing into the earth. That causes your leg to move, your pelvis to move, and there's a domino effect all the way up into the upper back, maybe up into your neck and skull. So just roll in and out of this half bridge pose a few times. The long leg side accepts the weight of the body, maintains contact with the ground, is passive. Before you switch sides, uh, you may want to do some little boat. Uh, you may want to try the two-footed bridge pose again. It could be interesting to uh, feel uh, how the two sides are um, processing two-footed bridge pose before you do one-footed bridge pose on the other side. Notice the breath in your body. So again, when you come to the second side, uh, arms are heavy, wide wingspan at about shoulder level or overhead, and the long leg side uh, is in essence in Shavasana. The foot of the bridge pose leg plants, it's the catalyst for the action all the way through, the body up through, the neck and skull. So half bridge pose um, is a back bending twist. It's unusual. Mm -hmm. We do it to feel the cascade of movement through the body, to give one side of the body the opportunity to release and experience motion while the other is passive. Now, you could go back and forth. You could do the first side again, and then back to the second side. Um, There is a variation of this um, where the hand and arm um, also ground. I'll just describe it. If you go back to... um, your first side. So if I have uh, a bridge pose leg on one side, the arm that's going to bend is that same side arm. So if my right leg is in bridge pose, my right arm will go over my head and I'll plant my hand on the ground. Right? Uh, for those of you who do wheel, this feels like a uh, wheel, as if the hand is in wheel. Right? So the simplest way to describe this is that the foot and the hand ground at the same time and the passive side still remains relaxed, accepting. Sometimes the hand and arm need a little bit of help to understand what it is to ground. So I take my other hand, I put my hand on the elbow, and as I plant my hand and foot, I guide my elbow back behind me. And sometimes this helps the hand to understand um, how to plant a little bit more fully into the ground. So we could say this is half wheel. So again, same uh, counter poses. You can uh, draw your knees into your chest for a little boat. You can do uh, the two-footed bridge pose. Um, If you're yearning to put your legs up in the air again, 
Um, maybe any of the legs in the air with uh, the foot movements, pointing and flexing, circling, uh, swinging uh, the feet in and out, shaking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then if you haven't had the opportunity to uh, try that half wheel um, on the other side, please go ahead. Um, or again, leave the arm out of it if that's not um, appropriate for you today and just uh, work with the foot. Um, another way I think of the hand and foot planting is um, it's very uh, primal. It's maybe from when we were quadrupeds and my hand and my foot have the potential uh, to ground equally, uh, fully and equally. All right, when you're ready, um, just take a moment to yourself might be in full shavasana, might be with one of the movements uh, that we've been returning to. Just a reminder that little boat can have cross legs. A little boat can involve rocking or circling. Give yourself uh, maybe just a little bit of time um, in the orientation uh, where you're able to do child's pose, uh, cat. We're going to move towards uh, downward facing dog, continuing to think about the feet. Okay, so uh, just, just create a little transition for yourself. You know, maybe just move your spine in cat. Remind yourself of that most basic um, narrative around cat, which is, it's for my whole spine. It's an undulation of the spine. It reminds the spine uh, that the spine can move uh, like a wave, head to tail. And then, of course, when you rest in your child's pose, this is the opportunity to feel the ground, feel your breathing. It's interesting in child's pose to notice your feet. What part of my foot is in contact with the floor? You know, maybe your toes are touching. Maybe some portion of your foot is touching the other foot. And just bring your awareness, your awareness all the way down to your feet. Let your breath be an anchor for yourself. When you are ready to um, enter down dog, uh, just a reminder that down dog can be done with your hands on the floor or on your mat. Um, down dog can also be done with your hands on the wall. All right, so um, Eden, can you just demonstrate hands on the wall for a moment? All right, so um, her hands can essentially be um, anywhere on the wall. Right? Um, and when we put our hands on the wall for down dog, uh, the definition of down dog becomes extremely simple. It is as I exhale, I'm resting my hands and my feet. Right? So uh, you might even just think of the wall as another floor. As she exhales, her hands and feet 
rest into the floor. Okay. All right, so a couple suggestions for the feet and the legs in down dog, whether your hands are on the wall or your hands are on the floor. Uh, you can turn your legs uh, inwards, which means your toes will be turned inwards. All right. Feel your full footprint settle during your exhalation. You can do this with the legs approximately hip width apart or quite wide. Uh, there's also a variation of down dog where you can try crossing your legs. Right? And cross your legs. And again, I'm, I'm so interested in my full footprint sinking. Right? So when the legs are crossed, that might mean you need to pay a little bit more attention uh, to the big toe side of the ball of your foot. Mm -hmm. There's another variation where you turn both legs in one direction. Yeah. Right. And obviously you'll turn the other way. And again, in all of these variations, you can have a simple singular intention, which is to rest, rest, rest the whole sole of the foot. All right. So I'll encourage you to do whichever of these variations you like to take a break, um, either by um, coming down to child, coming up to standing. Mm -hmm. If you come up to standing, you could just shake one leg at a time. Mm -hmm. All right. um, if you're standing, it might be very nice to simply stand in mountain pose and sink your feet. you're in child's pose, notice and feel the connection of the foot to the floor. All right, so if you're not already standing, why don't you come upright? Um, Eden, maybe, yeah, come back to your mat. You can do a little bit of um, release for the shoulder girdle. Right, so uh, maybe just swing the arms from side to side. Let's think about all the different ways we might swing the arms. So side to side, um, forward and back. Yeah. Right, you might like to move one arm at a time swinging. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or one forward and one back. Right. Uh, there's also both to the right, both to the left. Um, and then maybe just, uh, just a tiny moment of uh, some version of eagle, right? So here's a, a number of versions of eagle. Um, I can put my fingers, my thumbs, uh, my fingers in my armpits and my thumbs on my chest and just rest my elbows, feel my breathing. I can cross more thoroughly so I'm essentially hugging myself and my hands are resting. And I'm breathing. I might do a more typical eagle where my arms are wrapped. Again, in all of these, just think of the arms as heavy, falling, hands settled, breathing. And then please take um, a moment to do eagle on the other side. So other arm on top, um, either fingertips resting in the armpits, more of a hugging soft hug or a wrapped eagle. As you feel your breath moving your upper body, you're eroding tension. All right. And then simply release your arms and maybe shake them a little bit. You might imagine you're conducting. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
And then um, one little twist suggestion here that takes the hands behind the uh, back. Uh, interlace your fingers and put your hands behind your head. Yeah, soft knees. Yeah. Let your head rest a little bit into your hands and turn gently from side to side. Mm -hmm. It's like a lounge chair kind of feeling. I'm lounging my head into my hands and just letting my upper body release as I turn. Good. Okay. And then just free up the arms again. All right. Let's bring our attention back to the feet. Right. Uh, just uh, shift a little bit from side to side. And just consider uh, releasing your knee or bending your knee a little bit um, on the side uh, where you're bearing weight. Right? So if I shift my weight into one leg, that knee bends a little bit. That helps me lower the weight into the ground. All right? So side to side. Um, another um, trajectory could be one foot in front, one slightly behind. And again, shift your weight forward and back. Yeah, let the weighted leg, uh, let that knee be a little bit released. Feel your full footprint. Yeah. Yeah. And try the other foot in front. That's it. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and then one other little thing would be to put your legs back, you know, sort of just hip width apart, um, and then bounce the weight down into the ground. Right, so I release my knees, release them, almost like I'm um, bouncing my pelvis like a ball. If you ever play basketball, you know, bouncing, dribbling your pelvis down towards the ground, releasing uh, the weight, and even saying to yourself, down, 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 down. Right, and you can swing the arms as you do this. It's a nice little uh, counterpoint. Okay. Heels, 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 down, down, down. And then just uh, stand in mountain pose. Eyes closed if that's your preference. And feel the in breath. And feel the out breath. Feel your feet sink into warm earth. Well, that's where we started. And just take a few breaths in that manner. In breath. Out breath, feel feet, warm earth, full footprint. Okay. Give your legs a little shake. So why don't we try a few um, standing well, I was going to say standing balances. Sometimes I say standing on one leg poses, right? Because sometimes the word balance makes us, you know, kind of pull up and hold. And really, the standing balance poses are no different than any other pose. We're feeling for our grounding. Um, I'm going to demonstrate um, with the pillar, um, and uh, you can choose what you'd like to do. It's okay. All right. So why don't we start with tree pose? Okay. So uh, the most basic options for tree pose um, are I leave the ball of one foot on the ground and I lean the heel against the inner ankle of the other foot, right? Or I maybe bring that foot onto the calf. It's almost like my arch rests on the bulky side of the calf. Or I might be able to, you know, it just varies from day to day, rest my foot against my um, inner leg. My pants are slippery. I've got to keep my hand on my ankle, otherwise it's going to slide away. Okay. Now, what am I thinking about in tree pose? I want to feel the foot on the ground settle on my out breath. I'm hoping that helps my pelvis rest. The foot that is touching the inside of the other leg, it's actually resting into that leg or ankle. Mm -hmm. 
So in a standing balance, my attention is down. Where's the ground? There's the foot on the ground. There's the pelvis falling. There's the foot against the inner leg or inner ankle. All right. And so maybe take another breath and then uh, give your legs a tiny shake. You might rest forward for a moment um, and then switch sides. All right. So choose where you want that foot to be settled. And really think settled. It's settled against the inner leg. And the foot that's on the floor is quite settled as well. There is this suggestion in the standing balances to really invite the breath movement into the belly as a means by which we further relax the nervous system and the body overall. The more relaxed we are, the steadier we can be. All right. Again, when you feel that you're complete on that second side, give your legs a little shake. Right. Uh, counter pose can be resting forward. Down dog might be great to do again. Um, any of the down dog variations, turned in legs, crossed legs. Mm -hmm. And then what I'd suggest um, when you're ready to do maybe one more standing balance is either do tree pose again, okay, um, or uh, perhaps dancer, right? So dancer, um, of course, is the one where you're holding onto the top of the foot, yeah. And the instructions um, or suggestions are exactly the same as in tree pose. As I exhale, I feel my foot settle into the floor and that guides or reminds my pelvis to rest. The foot that you're holding actually rests into that hand. Right. In this approach to yoga, we do um, a very upright uh, dancer, usually. Or vertical. Yeah, you can hold on with two hands. Beautiful. I'd say the two most important things here are, do I have my grounding? And do I feel that my pelvis is dropping, which benefits my lower back and my lower spine tremendously? All right. So again, when you're ready, you'll release that leg. Uh, perhaps all you need is a bit of a shake of the legs and a swing of the arms. You know, if there's something um, else you feel like doing, uh, even a standing back bend can feel like a good counter pose. Uh -huh. Standing back bend is very similar in a way to dancer. Right? The feet are resting, the pelvis is resting, um, and there's a little bit of a back bend in the upper back. And of course, you'll take your time and you'll do the second side. Foot on the floor resting, foot in my hand resting, pelvis resting. Mm -hmm. 
you find that you're finished with the second side of your tree or with your dancer, um, again, maybe a forward bend, maybe a very wide-legged forward bend this time. Very wide, feel the heels sinking, feel the whole foot sinking, soft knees, and drop, drop, drop. Let your spine release, let your head release. You take your time, right? and then in order to come down to the ground again, bring your feet underneath you so you can slip your way down into child's pose. A few breaths in child's pose. And then please bring yourself onto your back or any other position that you think is best for you to complete your practice. Some of you might even choose to sit at this time. Some people really enjoy sitting to close out their practice. So whatever position you're in, just ask yourself the question, how does my body feel as it relates to and rests into the ground, the warm earth? How does the breath feel as it rolls through my body like a gentle wind. Mm 